All right, let's continue with type 2 hypersensitivity. The antibody involved in type 2 hypersensitivity is either IgM or IgG, mainly IgG, in contrast to type 1 where you used IgE. The antigen is fixed on the blood cells or any cells, in contrast to type 1 hypersensitivity where the antibody was fixed while the antigen was circulating. So this is quite the opposite of type 1. The duration can last uh, between minutes to hours and the classifications are the ones we're going to mainly focus on. There are three classifications, opsonization by FC portion with cell depletion and cell lysis, complement and receptor mediated inflammation and cellular dysfunction by the antibody. So in the first category there will be two subgroups, disease with cell depletion and disease with cell lysis caused by ADCC. So the diseases with cell depletion include autoimmune hemolytic anemia, ABO mismatch, erythroblastos fatalis, and uh, thrombocytopenia and leukopenia. So what do they, all of these have in common? Uh, let's take a couple of the examples. In autoimmune hemolytic anemia, you will have antibodies that will bind to your red blood cells. So as they will pass through the Billroth's cords of spleen, they will get stuck there and the splenic macrophages will now engulf them and digest them. As this is a systemic reaction, there will be a requirement of increased amount of ma splenic macrophages, so the spleen will increase in size. Eventually even the liver will take a part of it, this role and even the liver will increase in size, so you will have a hepatosplenomegaly in this case. Then you have a BO mismatch. This is a a problem with different uh, with a mismatch in blood groups so for instance if patient a has uh, type a blood while patient b has type b blood the patient a will have b uh, anti b antibodies while patient b will have anti a antibodies so if uh, one of them will give the blood to the other one the recipient will have antibodies against the donor's blood. So this will cause this similar problems. The spleen might get enlarged and even deliver it to some extent. Then another condition we're going to talk about is erythroblastosis fetalis. As you see here, this is, this is occurring usually in the second or third pregnancy in which the fetus is RH positive while the mother is RH negative. So the mother will form anti D antibodies which will cross the placenta and bind uh, to the fetal red blood cells. This will cause uh, engulfment by the macrophages of the fetus uh, resulting in hemolytic anemia. So the fetus will, be, uh, if it survives the labor, will be blood deficient and even also there will be a suspect of kernicterus which will be due to hyperbilirubinemia. The thrombocytopenia can uh, be due to immune thrombocytopenic purpura. This, uh, in this case you will have antibodies that bind to the GP1B, 2B or 3A receptors of the platelets in which the Red blood cells will get stuck the same way in the spleen and get digested by the splenic macrophages. This can be categorized into acute and chronic. Acute occurs in children after a viral infection, while chronic is usually a problem with SLE, so most likely female in her reproductive age. So let's talk a little bit about ADCC. ADCC stands for Antibody Dependent Cellular Cytotoxicity. The cells that play uh, play a role in this are PMNs, polymorph nuclear neutrophils, or just neutrophils, natural killer cells, eosinophils, and monocytes. In this case, to differentiate, there is no engulfment. There is the direct killing. So, let's take an example. Let's assume a person has a tumor. Your natural killer cells will go to that area. First, an antibody will bind IgG or IgM to that affected uh, tumor cell. And then the natural killer cell will come and release its perforins and granzymes 
to directly kill the affected cell without the engulfment of it. Another condition with ADCC can also be by eosinophils. You remember eosinophils could uh, uh, kill parasites and helminths. This could be by, as you remember from the previous video, major basic protein or eosinophilic cationic protein. This uh, release can kill the parasite or the helminth through IgG or IgGM connection. So this will be a direct cell lysis without the need of an engulfment. In the second part of uh, this video, we're gonna talk about the rest of the groups. Thank you.